in this little teaser, earn residual income in a $4 trillion industry that the government mandates? What got you intrigued? What got you the most interested? What part of that is the reason why you decided to spend a few minutes with me this evening? You want to put that in chat? That would be interesting to know as well. Is it the residual income part? Is it the $4 trillion industry, such a huge industry, which usually means great opportunity? Or was it the government mandate that also means great opportunity? How would you like to represent a product that the government mandates you to buy, people to buy? So in my case, really, it was all three of those things. And I want to talk about what it is. Um, so the marketing opportunity in the industry that I'm talking about is actually in healthcare. If you think about it, you know, the government, you know, you, you, they, you're mandated to have health care. Yeah, thank you. The intriguing thing was the government mandate. You're, you're mandated to have health have healthcare. If you somehow could take advantage of that industry, you know, think about being an industry that people, everybody has to buy. I mean, there's very few industries that you could think of. I mean, I've been in real estate. I'll share my, my bio in a second here. I'm a real estate guy. Government's not mandating me to buy real estate or for anybody to buy a house that I'm flipping. This was very intriguing. And if you look at healthcare, the gross national product, the gross yeah. domestic product of healthcare is 19.7%. It looks like it's about 17 to 19% of our gross domestic product every single year. So this is just a huge, about as big of industry as you can possibly imagine that you could be in. So that's the opportunity there. Now, what's the value proposition? Well, since everybody has to pay this, and by the way, when I say have to pay it, you know, you're penalized on your, when you do you file for your tax return, if you don't show proof that you have health insurance or a health plan, you're, you're penalized for that. So what if you were able to save people 30 to 70% on their health care? I mean, it's a, you know, four trillion dollar industry that you could help people save, you know, thirty to seventy percent, and get paid on it residually. To me, that's you know, that's the trifecta. I mean, to have it mandated by the government, paid on it residually, and be able to save people money—that's an amazing opportunity. So, a little bit about myself: I'm not in the healthcare business. This is not my background. I'm a real estate investor. I've flipped a lot of properties. My YouTube channel focuses on real estate. Uh, five or three of my five uh, meetup groups are all about real estate. I've all been all about real estate. But when someone introduced me to this, I just couldn't deny the opportunity and the intrigue to look into it deeper. So a little bit of that's in the back of my mind during this time. Uh, a little bit about my story. Out, out of college, um, I went into teaching and coaching. One of my best friends in college went into health insurance. He worked for Blue Cross and Blue Shield, was one of their top agents for the first couple of years. I thought, what a boring field to get into. You know, I'm having fun. I'm teaching. I'm coaching. I'm doing all this great stuff. And he's in this thing, in this health insurance. I'm like, insurance got to be the worst thing in the world to be involved in. But here's what happened. Every couple of years, he moved out of state. Every couple of years, I would visit him. And his house got bigger. And his office got bigger. And the amount of money he made was staggering. Uh, the last time I went to his house, I mean, you, you, know, you plug in the code. You do the little code at the front gate. And boo, it opens up. And you've got the horse you know, ranch and training going on over on this side. It's over the side is a full gymnasium for his kids. I mean, a full gymnasium with scoreboards and bleachers and locker rooms. And then you get to the football field, the full football field that the local high school uses because it's such a great facility that they practice on it. Then you've got the baseball fields. This is, and this, this is his house. Then you get to the huge house. And then years later, he actually built a lake house, in addition to that house, a lake house that sleeps, I think it was 42 people. So when I found out he made his money in health insurance, 
I, 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 I told myself, if I ever have the opportunity, I didn't want to get a health insurance license, but I knew the industry was so large. And the reason he made so much money, and he told me this, he said, Randy, you've got to find something that you sell it one time and you get paid on it year after year after year after year. That's residual income. That's residual passive income. So I was seeking out opportunities, always looking for areas. That's where I got into real estate. Think about it in real estate. The reason most people get into real estate is they want to be a, a homeowner, a landlord, that a tenant, you know, they fix up a building, they get tenants in there and they pay them every single month. Well, it's not so simple. If you're in real estate like I am, they don't always pay every single month. And it's a pain in the butt to try to get them out uh, once they stop paying. So real estate's a lot of work. But I was open to an opportunity in the healthcare field because I saw what could happen if you applied yourself and you were able to build something with residual income. And I saw that residual income play out in real time. Or like I say, I would visit him every couple of years and I saw the, the results of being able to make money from your sales your first year and then make money on your clients the second year and still getting paid on those first clients. And then more clients the next year and more clients the next year. And his business just exploded, multi, multi-million dollar business. He has a private jet. I mean, you name it, you can't imagine. And he did all of this in one state. His only license in one state. So this opportunity that I found, we can do nationwide. It's in almost every state. I think there's only two or three states in the entire country that we're not able to to take advantage of this opportunity in. Okay, so let's look at the healthcare opportunity here and a little bit about the statistics of healthcare. So how much is the average American, I, I pulled off these statistics, I hope they're accurate. I searched and uh, researched on the internet. These are uh, statistics that I found. Is that the average 40 year old individual pays about $477 in healthcare, which is about $6,000 per year. Okay. Now, you know, a little disclaimer there, it says, you know, uh, premiums, you know, a change or, or very widely and so forth, but I accept that. I'm just going to look at that 40, $477 per month number. Let's look at that for a second. There's an alternative to health insurance called health sharing. And I'm going to tell a little bit more about health sharing. But before I do that, let me just show you. Remember I said in that one slide, saving people anywhere from 30 to 70% on their health care. What kind of an opportunity would you have if you had that ability? Well, here's something that I did. I just pulled up a quote of, for, of someone the age 45, because they remember that statistic said in their 40s. Okay, so I picked right in the middle, 45. So we can provide health sharing opportunities for somebody that's age 45. And remember the national average, we just saw it was $477. Well, I just set up this quote and this quote is, and this is only with a $2,500, uh, $2, they don't call it deductible with health share, but it's the same thing as an deductible. They call a primary responsibility amount of 2,500. So great coverage. You can go to any network and with this program, um, at age 65, you're only paying $268 a month. Remember the national average, according to the statistic I just found, was $477. That means the savings, the average person in their 40s would save $209 per month. That's a savings of $43, 43, I mean, percent, 43.8%. That's why I'm excited is that we could save people a ton of money and get residual income and become wealthy at the same time. So let's look at what the difference is. If, is health sharing the same as health insurance? No, it's not. But at the core, the basic principle is the same. And in fact, health share is what health insurance really should have been and what it really started out as being. So a health share program is where uh, is a program where people put money in and then they share in the health bills. But isn't that really what insurance is? But the difference is insurance is a for-profit company. So on top of that pure innocence of 
let's all put money in and then we share the expenses. You've got the profit built into that. Health sharing used to only be available to the religious community, but I found a company that now, and by the way, they're able to do mission-based health share programs. I found one that's mission-based, so they don't have to be a certain religious affiliate. They can, uh, anybody can join this program, this health share program. And with this health share program, even though it's not insurance, it counts as the mandated insurance under the Affordable Care Act. So you know how earlier I said it's mandated by the government? Well, it's not mandated that you have to have a health insurance. It's man a, a health care or health sharing also works the same way. So you can have one of those two plans. We actually have a plan that saves people 30 to 70%. So that's why I put this out on my business uh, meetup group, as well as my real estate meetup group, because you guys are entrepreneurs. I'm sure you're like me. I always look at every business and say, okay, is that a business for me? How can I make money on this? How, as an entrepreneur, is there an opportunity for me or not? And that's what I want to lay out to you. So you can take a look at it yourself and see, maybe you come to the same conclusion that I do, and maybe you don't. But you've got all the pieces here. You've got a huge opportunity. You've got a value proposition. And now it's just a matter of, okay, what does this mean to me exactly? How can I pull this off? The other thing with health sharing, this particular health share program, is that there's no network. So many health insurance programs, in fact, most health insurance programs, as you know, you have to go to a certain network. If you go out of network, you may not get any coverage at all, or you may get reduced, significantly reduced coverage. Well, with this program, there's no networks. You can go to any doctor you want. You can go from this doctor to that doctor to that doctor. You can get a second, a third, fourth opinion. You can do any, you know, can go to any doctor, no matter what network, no matter what area or state you live in. Okay. So what else are the differences? I had to research this. I'm a real estate guy. I'm not an insurance guy. So I had to go to work. When I saw the opportunity here, I thought I got to learn more about this industry. And the big question that people ask me, and I asked myself is, how can this company offer as good or better coverage at 30 to 70% less? I had to find that out. I had to get my mind around it. I had to wrap around the logic of that because it's not really logical, right? How can they do better for less? Well, I found a couple statistics for you. And here's one of them. A company like United Health Group, which is a huge company, right? One of the main health insurance suppliers. In 2021, their revenues grew 30 billion, $30.5 billion. It grew that much, 11.8%. So their revenues in 2021 were $287.6 billion. I mean, that is a amazing how much money these companies are making. You want to know how much your health, why your health insurance costs so much? Look at the profits that this company's making and think about it. What does profits really mean to a health insurance company? Doesn't it really mean that they charge people $287 billion more than what they paid out in benefits? I mean, isn't that the logical conclusion? How can you call that profits? They make their money on the collecting of premiums. They collected all this money, and then now they're paying out less. So they made an operating, and by the way, I'm sorry, that was gross revenues. So that was revenues that they generated, but their earnings was 27, or I'm sorry, $24 billion in 2021. So they overcharged people basically $24 billion. All right. So that's one big difference is that these can be run and the company I'm affiliated with is run by a nonprofit that's huge. Also, when you look at the highest executive levels, these healthcare companies, I researched it a little bit. Last year, or in 2021, the highest paid CEO uh, in healthcare, uh, health insurance was this David uh, Cornani, and he made $91 million. $91 million was paid out to the CEO. The CEO of our company and most nonprofit companies 
are capped or at least extremely low and, and modified. Um, so you eliminate it again. Where did that $91 million come from that CEO? It came from overcharging health premiums every single you know, month, month after month after month. Now, here's another big thing. And I think my statistic is actually a little bit wrong. I'm going to adjust this. I'll, I'll read it the way I have it here, but I think it's a little exaggerated. I want to get this a little bit more uh, accurate, I believe. But health sharing organizations are not mandated to take people with pre-existing conditions. Now, that's good and bad, right? If you have a pre-existing condition, you love the fact that there are insurance companies out there that are mandated to take you and to cover your pre-existing conditions. A lot of them have restrictions on it, but at least you can go somewhere. But people that are healthy, you're overpaying drastically for insurance. And by a health share company not having to pay for pre-existing conditions, they can eliminate that one maybe condition. Maybe somebody has you know, um, a heart condition or they're on insulin. So there are some pre-existing conditions they will allow, like diabetes, for example, but not if they're on insulin, they won't try to take that. So what some families do is they may keep one person, let's say a family of five, they may keep one person on an insurance program and then put the other ones on a health share. So statistically, the reason they can do it and what the data says here on the slide says that that 5% of the health insurance members account for 95% of the medical expenses. So they're eliminating that with the health share. They don't have to burden the healthy people with all the expenses of somebody that uh, is very costly. And I don't think it's 5%. I've heard that statistic again, it was maybe more like 30 or something, but it's very low. In other words, if you don't have to insure the people that are really draining the system, then you can make it much more affordable for everyone else. Okay, now let me go through this. Now here's an example, little case study. So this is a friend of mine that I've known for many years. And so I said, you mind if I run your numbers on here? And we can run this, by the way, if we have anybody that has courage and wants to put their date of birth in the chat, I can actually do and run a quote like instantly on the website. But I'll give you an example. So this person was born in 69. So I believe that makes him about 52 years old. So I ran the numbers for him, just him, even though, you know, if he has a family, actually families even save more money. But I just ran this for him. And here's what it came out to. So I just plugged in one person, put his date of birth here. And as long as they're not obese or a smoker, then they get the kind of the premium rate. And that's where he's at, the standard rate. And uh, at $2,500, what they call a primary responsibility amount, which translate, think in your mind that that's a deductible, right? So that's what uh, the health insurance uh, you know, industry calls a deductible. So for a $2,500 deductible, he's coming in at just $288 a month, $288 a month. And his question was, well, how could that be as good as what I'm paying? And what about this? And what about that? I said, okay, listen, let's run the best and the worst case scenario. The best case scenario is you pay $199.88 per month times 12 months. You pay $3,456 a year, and that's all you pay. You're healthy. You don't have issues. That's all you pay. But you're not penalized by the government because you've made your, rec your qualification of health insurance or health share. So you, you're not penalized by the government. So that's kind of the best case scenario. And that's what you, you would pay. So I said, okay, what's the worst case scenario? All right. The worst case scenario is, okay, I pay the 299 times 12. So I pay that amount. And then I really have to use health insurance, health care, health care, health care. So I pay my $2,500 deductible. And then after that, this copay, that's where the health share pays you 90%. They pay 90% of your bill and they only you only have to pay 10% of that. But that maxes out at $5,000. So even if you had, you know, just unbelievable health expenses, the most that could be would be another $5,000. So the most you could possibly pay on this plan would be $10,956 if you see it right here. 
this person, and that equates to, if I divide that by 12, that equates to $913 a month. With just this person's standard premium, without even his deductible, without his copay, just his monthly premium alone in this traditional insurance program, he was paying $1,400. Think about that. The minimum, the best case scenario in his other plan would be $1,400 a month. So right there, the best case scenario, $1,400 versus $288 a month. I mean, look at the difference in that. That is unbelievable. He's he's saving eleven hundred a month. That's about a seventy to eighty percent savings on him alone. And if you can see on this application, when you get over a family of three plus, four is the same as three. Five is the same as three. Eight kids in the family is the same as three. The larger the family, the more the savings. It's quite incredible. Okay, now go down to the next slide. All right, so residual income. So what's it for me? I invited people from my meetup groups, as I said before, because I believe you're entrepreneurs. I believe that you look out of the box. It's just like, oh, health insurance. I, you know, I don't know anything about it or whatever. I didn't either. We don't have to be insured. There's no insurance process. There's a, a simple way to get started with this. It's very inexpensive. It's under $300. Can you believe that? You could be in this business for under $300. And there's not any insurance pro or licensing process. It's just simply um, a, what we call a certification, which is basically reading the brochure, understanding our particular offering, and then answering questions and passing it. And if you don't pass the first time, you take it again and again and again. I'll go into more detail. But think about this. So remember we said the average individuals paying about uh, $477. Well, let's just say the average person that you got on health share is $400 because that's probably, maybe it's a, a couple or it's a, once in a while, it's a family. Well, we pay out residual income of $32 a month on that for as long as they keep the program. You could introduce somebody to this today and you could get paid on it for the rest of your life. That's residual income. That's what my friend accomplished in his life. That's why he's worth millions of dollars because he found something that he could sell one time and get paid on it for the rest of his life. The next year he adds more customers, more customers, more customers. It's mind blowing when you think about what the potential is. And you can sell this to individuals and you could sell it to businesses. How many small businesses out there? How many large businesses out there? You could land one account and be set for life. You could land one account and never have to work again. I mean, that's what the potential is. Now, a disclaimer, you know, results aren't typical and I've got to get all that out there, right? I'm not saying you're going to be able to do this. But as an entrepreneur, you want to look at these opportunities and think about it. So let's say you had one small business and they just had 10 employees you'll probably be able to, let's say each one of those employees were paying, they were paying $1,000 a month, which would not be out of the ordinary for those 10 employees. Let's just make the math easy. They're paying 100,000, no, 100, uh, $120,000 a year because 10 times 1,000 is 10,000 a month times 12 months. They're paying $120,000 a year. You have the opportunity to save that business as much as $60,000. If you give them a 50% savings, you could save them $60,000 a year. And in exchange for your good work, you could earn 20 or $32. And this is the average $32. Well, in that example, if they're all paying 100, you saved them, it'd be $40 a month. But let's just say $32 a month on every one of their employees. That could be $320, $320 per month for the rest of your life. Now, that's not life-changing, but the opportunity is, because if you can do that for one business, couldn't you do that for a second business, the third business? Couldn't you stumble upon a business that has 100 employees? And now all of a sudden, it's $3,200 a month for the rest of your life, or as long as they you know, keep the policy in place. I mean, that to me is mind blowing. This is where I could top, you know, tap in 
to this industry like my uh, good college buddy did and made millions in this industry. So, you know, think about that. And I, what I want to do, oh, by the way, it's not all work. I've been associated with this company only a few months and I've already gone on a free leadership cruise. I actually took that picture right there. It looks like it could be in a postcard, doesn't it? I actually took that picture from a wave runner. So we were on a wave runner tour and this is the, the mountains in the background. That's actually Haiti. I never realized uh, what the beautiful areas of Haiti. This is a, a private beach from Royal Caribbean that they own in Haiti. It's beautiful. So I'm on a wave runner and I took that picture with my cell phone uh, camera. And um, this I've experienced already within just a couple months of being a part of this group. And because um, we want things to be opportunities you look for opportunities to be lucrative, simple, and fun. And without those all three components, to me, I'm not interested. It's got to have all those components. And this speaks to all of those components. So I'm obviously very excited about this. This has done well by me in just you know very, very short period of time. And the potential really is mind-blowing. I think right now, not too many people have heard of HealthShare. In fact, if you guys would indulge me, I would like to um, um, ask anybody out there if they ever heard of HealthShare before this. You might have heard it on the radio. I listen to a Christian radio station, and there's HealthShare companies that um, they do um, a, a lot of advertising on those Christian stations. So I see a, a couple of comments in here. I want to get to that, but uh, just by just maybe just a simple yes or no: Have you ever heard of HealthShare before? Because I think it's going to be so, you know, people are going to know, oh, if you got pre-existing condition, you must be on health insurance. Oh, you don't. You're on a health insurance program, and that would be the, the norm. It says, if it's technically not insurance, then what's the benefit for clients? It sounds a bit like a PPO, but not really. So, um, so the benefits of the clients, it works just like insurance. You have a card, looks just like your insurance card. You bring it into your doctor when you get a checkup, physical, whatever, you go into emergency, whatever, it'll have a copay amount on there. Now, the first time people go into there because the company uh, and health share is not as prevalent as insurance, they might say, oh, I don't know if we take that. Oh, just call the number on the back. We take it. Everybody takes it. And what's great about it from a provider standpoint, most providers don't get paid by insurance company from 30 to 90 days is pretty much the standard. Think about that. Every time you go in and you, you're using your insurance for something, that doctor a lot of times won't get paid for 30 to 90 days. This company prides themselves in trying to pay everything within the in two weeks, no longer, than 30, you know, no longer than 30 days, but in two weeks is the average. So they pay very quickly. And the health share works just like in health insurance. So you'll have an amount that you need to pay. And then everybody else, all the other members, which is like a pool, they'll all pay the rest, just like insurance. Insurance is kind of a centralized uh, mechanism where everything goes into this big company that's making millions of dollars and they're paying it. I don't want to get too much into the detail, but this is actually a decentralized system that the software they use for this system is actually uh, patent pending. So it's such advanced technology and a way for people to share their health costs and then not pay for this overpriced insurance, which again was what insurance was supposed to do anyway. So the next one, let's say, who else benefits from the sale and what is the percentages? No first time. Okay, thank you. Um, that was the second part. No first time they're here in the health share. So, um, so the person, the direct sales, a direct sales company, uh, the name of the company is, the, the name of the health share program that we have is Impact Health Share. And I'm a part, uh, I'm an affiliate. Somebody said something about an affiliate. I guess it could be called that. I'm a direct sales person now um, and offering you the same opportunity of a company that's got a license. They have a contract with Impact Health and they are the exclusive seller, provider, marketer of Impact Health Share. So the person, the primary person that benefits that gets a quote commission, residual income, that is the person directly responsible for the sale. Now there's other ways too to build sales teams. If you wanna build a sales team, 
Um, and that's my intent here. If anybody wants to join a sales team, we can work together as a team. Um, you don't have to pay me out of your commission. The company will actually pay me for that. Uh, I have to qualify for some of that. And we can get into more details. I don't want to spend too much time here. I really wanted to keep it to a half hour and we're a little bit beyond that. No, uh, familiar to, let's see, other medical share. Oh yeah, they're familiar with other, other medical shares. Well, see, and that's about what I found. I, I think about when I talk to people about it, my experience is about 60% of the people have not heard of health sharing. Uh, they don't know the difference between that and health insurance. And I had, I had, I had actually had a health share program about 10 years ago with a religious affiliated company. Um, so I was familiar with that. Then I went back into corporate America. Um, and it was my health insurance was covered by my company. But now we're looking at getting a large company. I actually have a meet, I set up a meeting with the CEO of Impact HealthShare, who I now have personal cell number. So if we can land as a team, if we can land a big company, I can get the CEO of Impact HealthShare to be a part of a Zoom or a three-way call. He was on the cruise. I spent a lot of time with him and his wife, picking his brain, talking to him. Uh, just a fabulous experience. So um, anyway, we can engage him in getting some of these. I, I'm not going to take every customer to him and burden him in that. But uh, the one company I set up with a meeting with him and the CEO, and that company only has about 20 employees, but they have about a thousand um, independent contractors, a thousand. If he decides to pull the trigger and offer it to them, as a value added to his independent contractors or just make it as an option, a preferred option for them. And we get a thousand you know, policies. Think about it. That'd be $32,000 a month, every single month that they keep their policies in place. So I don't know if you guys see the same kind of opportunity that I do. Feel free to bring yourself off of mute um, and ask questions at this time. So we need to pay a monthly fee every month with the program. Um, I'm not sure if you're talking about the insurance, the health share, that's your quote premium. Um, on the other side, to be a part of this and to be able to sell this ongoing and to have them do all your accounting and send you the information, it's a one-time fee of $299. And then I just pay $25 a month and they do all my commissions, uh, direct deposit to me. They do all my accounting. Uh, if I do put somebody on my team, they're going to take care of their commissions for me. I don't have to pay them out. They do all of that. $25 a month. I also have my own personalized website. In fact, I want to share that right now. So I have a personalized website with that $25. They'll host the website for you. It'll have your name. So you can actually just have people go right to the website. Also, you don't have to do any of the customer service or selling. Um, there's a place on here which says get a quote. Somebody, I'm going to give you an on the spot. You see how easy it is to quote somebody out. So um, someone, I mean, I'm going to check the chat here. I'm hoping somebody will do this. Can somebody just text me their date of birth or maybe it's their kid's date of birth or something? It would be good if you knew what they were paying for health insurance. If anybody knows what they're paying for health insurance or approximately and want to type in their date of birth, that would be great. Um, I'll use that as a specific example. If not, I'll have to throw a number out there, um, you know, but it won't mean as much. Uh, it'll mean more if we can get uh, someone to type in a, a date of birth. And maybe if you know how much you're paying for health care. Oh, great. Okay. So we're going to do one. Thank you, Veronica. Um, so we got 429.80. Okay. So all that you do is you just put in 429.19. Uh, and we'll just do it for one person. I'm going to click on get quote and look down here. So $268 is the quote for someone with a deductible of $2,500. Now they could pick lower amounts. You know, they could pick, oh, I'm really healthy. I just want the least amount. I don't want to be penalized by the government. I want to have something in case of a real emergency. You know, they say that the top reason why people go bankrupt, have to file for bankruptcy, is not loss of job, it's medical bills. So this could be a lifesaver for somebody, not only literally a lifesaver, because now they can get the health care that they need, 
but also a financial lifesaver and that they may not have to file for bankruptcy because they have an affordable option for health insurance. So thank you, Veronica. And, um, and by the way, um, what I'd like to do, I'm gonna put up a screen with my contact information. So if you want a one-on-one -on -one further information, an individual quote, I'm gonna put that up there right now. So I'm going to leave this screen up here. Um, so you should see my contact information. If the if anything like uh, from power from the Zoom, if that's in the way, just click on it. And you can move that around. So if it's covering that up, but you know a couple of things. One, if you're interested in this opportunity, and I'm glad you guys stayed in with me, and I think that really shows that you're entrepreneurs. You know, maybe it's not for you. Maybe you're too busy. I thought I was too busy because. I flip multiple houses. I have about four businesses. I, uh, you know, I've got a luxury share business. Uh, I've got uh, uh, short-term rentals, luxury short-term rentals. I flip houses. I'm developing apartment complex. I'm like up to here in real estate. Nobody can tell me, Randy, I'm too busy to do this because I will challenge you with me as far as um, how busy, you know, we, we compare our hours and what we do uh, for a living. And I just saw this was just too good. This was just too good for me not to carve out a little bit of time and to put into this because like I say, I've seen personally the kind of results that this type of uh, industry can do for people and doing a residual product that's really a service, not even a product. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to inventory, you don't have to ship it. It's a product that's going to save people a ton of money. So that was checkbox number one. I mean, I got to give something of value to people. You know, you got to be able to go to your family and friends and be able to really give them something of value. And this is that type of thing. So uh, there's my email address. It's just randypertler at gmail.com. If you got through me on my meetup group, you know, you can always message me on meetup. Um, so you can do that on meetup. And then also, if you're just interested in getting a quote, let's say, okay, I'm too busy or whatever, but I'd like to see if I could save some money for me or for my family. Um, just reach out to me. We can do that quick little quote like I did for Veronica. You know, we can do that quote very quickly and uh, give you a price. And here's the other thing. You do not have to become an expert on this. I've given you more information than probably 99% of the people that share this. Um, they have full customer service for you. That's other, what's the $25 a month? You got full customer service with Impact HealthShare. If you want to email me, I can send you out uh, the brochure. It's very professional. You're going to be very impressed with it. Right, so this is the brochure. Again, I got to move some things out of the way so that I can see it. But this is the brochure. This is a complete brochure with all the information, talks about what's covered, what's not covered, how it works what their primary responsibility is. I mean, everything. This is very professional. You know, to be able to get a contract with what, a company like this, that you have this opportunity built in, this infrastructure of customer service people, a quality product, not having to get licensed. I didn't want to get licensed. Plus, if you get licensed, you got to get licensed in every state you want to sell this to. Not with this. With the house share, you can sell it in all the different states. Like I said, I think there's maybe three that you can't sell it in, but that's about it. The other thing I'm involved in real estate, I want to go to, um, think about all those small real estate offices. Um, they don't yeah. have health, they don't offer health care. To me, this is the value proposition is to go to a, someone that's got a, you know, maybe 30 agents and say, hey, how would you like to help? Um, with your retention, because that's what happens. And, you know, I'm a broker. I know people jump from one office to the next to the next. How do you keep that person engaged? Well, think about it. Corporate America has been doing it for years. Offer them health care. And that value to them is more than what it costs. Oh, I can't leave the company. I, you know, I got health insurance. Well, think yeah. about it. All these independent agents, whether they're real estate brokers or, um, you know, what else? even insurance agents, you know, a lot of those may not have insurance. You know, they may sell car insurance. They may not have health insurance. So all of those things, a restaurant owner, you know, you offer your employees insurance. Well, no, I can't afford to. Well, guess what? You know, that now you can cool. afford to and you can retain them, you know, and it could be, it could still be a, a shared thing where, you know, the employee could pay half and the uh, 
the uh, employer could pay. We could still do that type of thing. But anyway, yeah, yeah. I think the right entrepreneur is going to help me, you know, just take this and move it on fire here. Anyway, great, uh, great talking with you. And I hope you guys, um, you know, make the right decision for yourself. If it's something you want to do, I want to help you succeed in this. So have a blessed evening and thanks for joining me. Take care. All right. Thank you very much.